Fletcher has not changed in my eyesight. He has not changed not once, not at all. Some people say he's a mama's baby. <laughs> but I don't see it. It's just, just typical kid. He did things that little kids do. I mean, nothing out of the ordinary, nothing surprising. Sometimes he would do things that I would say don't do, but that's common. That's with all kids. For instance, I went to work one day and said, don't climb the tree back there because you might fall out the tree. He went right on and climbed the tree and fell out the tree, cut his knee up. So I ended up coming home from work to take him so he could get it all stitched up, but it was okay. Normal, typical children stuff. I'll be like, it ain't too much you do that I don't know about. If I don't know right now, I'm gonna find out. Just growing up in my household, it was a single wide trailer. It had three rooms, four kids. It was me, my twin sister, my older brother, my older sister, and it was just my mom was a single mom. And she raised all of us. You know, it was, it was happy. You know, everybody was happy. You know, all the kids were happy. Everybody got along. She took care of us, just a single mom. And she, I think she did a real good job at it. A lot of people have never heard of Yazoo City, or Yazoo City as they put it, but it's just an average quiet place with a few stores. Yazoo City is our little hometown. It's where it all happened. It's not really a place for younger people that maybe want to need more excitement, you know what I'm saying? There's some good people there, and there's some not so good people there, you know, but that's in every town. We grew up in a neighborhood where it was just like people always fighting and we just things that shouldn't be going on that we was going up around. If you want to hang around a bad crowd, you know, there's bad crowds out there in, in the neighborhood. But if you want to hang around a good crowd, there's good crowds out there. If you want to be a troublemaker, then, you know, you got those people out there. But if you want to be successful, then you kind of pull yourself away from it. These kids come from Yazoo City. This is their world. They don't leave. They do not leave this community. They don't see past this community. And if I can get them out of here, to college. Most of my student athletes, if not all, graduate. With Fletcher, we really saw he might be able to play on Sundays, seriously, but we've got to get him out of here first. I've been to high school for seven years and uh, going back today for a visit, see some old teachers. Um, you know, I'm still going to say hey, uh, maybe see a few athletes in the hallway, say hey, shake their hand, give them a few words of encouragement. It's the hair, that's all it's it is. No, it's a little height. This right here is a trophy case. As you can see right here, where they retired my high school football jersey. Those right there, everything on that list was everything I was accomplished from the time I was in high school to the time I left. For a minute there, Flesh was falling off grade-wise. Miss Cage got with me and then she got with him. Then that's when, you know, the teachers kicked in and Ms. Caters kicked in and, you know, everything got to be smooth sailing. They this is Ms. Cater. Ms. Cater, she was uh, my high school counselor and she made it happen. I'm a big SEC football fan. He would come in and talk about the game Saturday. How did LSU do? How did Ole Miss do? What did Mississippi State do? And through that, we just developed a relationship talking about football and talking about how they did on Friday nights. Then it became an issue of, we've got to get you eligible. And it's like I tell all of these kids, it doesn't matter how good you play on Friday night if you're not making your grades, if you don't have that ACT score. We can't, it's not going to happen. As his math teacher, I will say math was not his strength. Not at all. I still admit it to his name. In eighth grade, I remember you, do you remember being in two math classes? You were in my math class yes. and a compensatory math I was, class. I really was. And first nine weeks, I can't remember, your grade was fine. Second nine weeks, it dropped and I wanted to know, was it me? <laughs> Are you no, mad with me? The reason that your grades were dropping? No, no I wasn't. And uh, it was a time when, you know, we just knew he needed the extra help in math. Passed both classes he did, but not without me pushing, shoving, dragging. Miss Scott, man, hey, she, she helped, she pushed me. Uh, and, you know, I love her and, you know, uh, she, she, she's one of the reasons I am where I am today. And I love him back <laughs> and nothing he can do about it. <laughs> it meant a lot to have those people in play, you know, to say, well, okay, you're doing okay, but we know that you can do better. You know, just to be able to help a kid, to help any kid is, you know, my passion, it's what I'm here for. 
and he was very focused and did everything I told him to and I think that's what set Fletcher apart from the other kids. When he got to me, he was 6'4", probably 180 pounds, big ears, big smile. That We saw something special in him from day one as a freshman. We knew that this kid would be, he would be something if somebody takes time and, and helps him out. My freshman year of high school, I don't think I could bench 135 pounds. And then when I finally got there, I was like, yeah, I'm the man, I can do 135. I mean, he's just going there like every other day and trying to do 135 until I could do it. And, and there you go to show you that I never gave up on it. I never quit. This is the weight room right here. Still the same. S same glasses. Everything's still the same. Same weight racks. Same everything, man. Ain't nothing changed in here. But uh, there's going to be a change here pretty soon. I can feel it coming. And uh, I'm, I'm going to be the one to make that happen. That was my rack right there. That was the big dog rack. If you want to be a big dog, you know, you got in high school, you had to do at least, I mean, 225 on the bench, you had to squat at least, you know, 315 plus in high school. You know, you do that in high school, you the man. We all knew the athlete he'd be, but he rode four wheelers and worked on cars and went hunting all the time. You know, he was a, just a country kid. And then he, he realized that that was what was taking his, his attention away. And I told him, you know, that you, you could be the best player in the world if you can't graduate, it, it ends here. It, it stops in Yazoo, it stops in high school, you'll never get out. And he understood more about that, that, you know, now, yeah, you're right. You know, I can still do what I want to do, but take care of my business off the field too. As you can see, the 2006 banner still hanging on the fence, baby. You know, a lot of people ask me after high school, you know, doing, do I ever see myself going to the league? You know, honestly, no, I didn't, I didn't see myself. You know, I just said, I just tell everybody I wanted to go to college first and then, you know, see, you know, what my career take me from then. So that's about it. The recruiting process was off the chain. I mean, it was, it was just like, the mail that was coming to the school, they had bags and bags of mail going to the school. I would go to the mailbox every day. I had 10, 15, 20 different letters from different schools or the same school. And oh my God, when is it gonna stop? It was just about every weekend for me taking him somewhere. Coach Wallace made sure that I came in every day and worked. And he traveled, make sure I got to any kind of camp I was invited to, any kind of combine I was invited to. Man, it just took off from there, man. Just started getting offers, you know, coaches coming to visit. It's different than your parents taking you because they don't really know exactly what's going on, what to look for. And I could really, I could tell him that this is what's going to happen with that. And, you know, I think he appreciated that a lot. Uh, high school coach, you know, he played college ball. He played at Mississippi State. Mississippi State and Delta State. Uh, he, he kept pushing me. He kept coming, getting me, pushing me, working hard. You know, showing me, just give, showing me the road how to be a leader. So once he finally made a couple of visits, and when we got back, he said, I'm going to Mississippi State. And we were glad that's where he wanted to go because it's only like two and a half hour ride and instead of all the way to Alabama or LSU or all these other places. You know, in the end, I think he, he chose Mississippi State because it was a family kind of thing, you know. My biggest thing was to stay in state. And that's because of, of many reasons, financially. Uh, with, you know, with my mom and family being able to come see me two hours away and be able to go home the next night. So that's was one of the main reasons. He made the choice that was right for him and it turned out to be a, a great choice. Growing up, New York was just like a place I always talked about. Because I'm from Jersey City, you know? Never thought in a million years that I would ever go to New York. But I went. Never thought I would be amongst the best of the football players. And I never just thought I would be in their presence, you know. Draft was something that I would never forget. That's a proud, proud moment to sit back there in the green room, everybody nervous, you know, waiting on the phone to ring to see, you know, which way it's going. 
They called him on his phone and told him that Philadelphia had traded up to get him at number 12, and it was like, whoa. With the 12th pick in the 2012 NFL Draft, the Philadelphia Eagles select Fletcher Cox, defensive tackle, Mississippi State. It was, oh my God, that is an experience that, oh, it's something, something serious right there. I am extremely proud. I am so proud of my brother. I just think it's just give him hope, you know. Like, if he can make it out of Yazoo City to play pro ball, if he can make it out of Yazoo City to do anything, we can do it too. There's not too many people out of Yazoo City that, that made it, but he's one of them. He's showing you that no matter where you come from, how you grew up, that if you put your mind to it, you can do what you want to do and go where you want to go. I looked at Fletcher as my son. I would do anything in the world for him. And I always made it a point to tell him how proud of him I was. Because I, I thought that as a player, if I had that relationship with my coach, I would want him to be proud of it, you know. And for him to actually, you know, first round, you know, finally made the Pro Bowl, you know, it's, that's, I could not have a son and be any more proud of than I am a, a Fletcher, you know. Knowing what I came from and not wanting to go back, wanting to get out of Yazoo City, I wanted to show that that support system that was with me, you know, through the struggles, through the ups and downs, that I really appreciated them. I just put my nose down and, and go to work every day. When it boils down to it, it, it really means a lot. And to all of those that helped during that period and that time, if he was doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing, and they said, well, I'm gonna tell your mama, you know, I appreciate you telling me that. Because if, if they didn't tell that, then I wouldn't have known that he was doing these type things, you know. So yeah, it does take a village to raise kids now. And it brings me joy. And as you can see, I light up like a Christmas tree, <laughs> like plugging in a Christmas tree when um, I talk about it. Because I, I am, I am so proud of him that he has turned out to be the man that he is. You know, he's done a good job. He's done an excessively good job.